Assalamu alaikum, hello, and welcome to this, your Two White Muslim Show. It's Wednesday, it's six o'clock, which means that he has to say this. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi. Wa barakatuh. My name's Junaid Rahim. My name's Muhammad Yusuf Bashforth. And as you all know together, we're affectionately known as... The Two White Muslims. You also know there's three very good reasons for that. Reason number one. There are two of us. Reason number two. We're both white. Most importantly though, reason number three. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we are both Muslim, Muslim and, and proud, proud to be so. so and proud to be so. Just the two of us this week. No Corsa. No Corsa tie what, this week. We are where, not is, where is he? By our, by, he's, 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 he's in a, what, 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 what is it? He's gone rogue. Gone rogue. <laughs> he's, he's gone he's, AWOL. He's gone AWOL. He's disappeared. <laughs> so you just have the two white Muslims, myself and my dear brother, uh, Muhammad Yusuf. Um, and, do you know, we, with regards to the topic for this evening, we're going to carry on from where we left off last week. Um, it's, it's impossible at this moment in time uh, to have failed to notice that there are significant issues um, facing our brothers and sisters in humanity and our brothers and sisters in Islam in uh, the Palestine and Israeli conflict. Uh, which, you know, uh, uh, still rages, rages tragically on. And so um, we both feel that it would be, it, it would be an error to, to not discuss this this evening, given, you know, how important this is and also how the, the, the impact it has on everybody involved, those there, present, but also those, you know, miles away who feel it in their very bones when these tragedies occur. Do you know, Junaid, um, that there are all sorts of mixed messages coming through? Mm -hmm. Mixed messages from the media, mixed messages from government. Yes. Nobody knows what, what to even think about this anymore. No, very true. Um, and people are getting very, very, they're finding it hard to know what to say. What's yes. the right thing to say? I don't want to upset or offend anybody. You know, I, I, I want to be on the right side of history, but I also want to, you know, converse in a way that's not going to offend. That's right. Yes. Absolutely. So, um, th for example, it's, uh, there are some people now saying it's illegal to fly a Palestinian flag. Yes. It isn't. No. It isn't illegal to do that. It's illegal to uh, promote terrorism. Yes. And, but flying a Palestinian flag doesn't do that. Yeah. All that flying a Palestinian flag promotes is solidarity with a people who are being battered at the moment. Yes. Um, and unnecessarily so. Yeah, and so, it is the flag of Palestine. It is because I mean we we find we're going to talk a lot about how people conflate things, how people join one thing with another, and it creates confusion and misinformation. Yeah. But if we take the example, you and I were both raised in the in the seventies yes. and into the eighties. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember when there were when there were skinheads in this country marching up and down the streets with the Union Jack, um, decrying immigration. Yes. And saying that it should stop and, and people who we both love and adore should in effect go to another country. Yes. And they were doing that carrying the Union Jack. Yes. Yeah, the flag of Great Britain. Yes. And it became a it came to a point where when you saw that flag, it was associated with what? Racism. With racism. Yes. It became almost a racist, racist yes. trope to see that flag. And now, there are people in, 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 in my family and people in your family who, when they see that flag now, even today, get a little shiver run down the spine. The interesting thing, though, is that these uh, sets of uh, racist people who were anti-immigration mm. adopted a different kind of flag eventually. They yeah. went away from the Union Jack and adopted the George flag. Yes. Yeah, what is the George flag? Well, the George flag is, is a white background with a red cross on it. And, and where did that come from? <laughs> well, um, I mean, originally that was from the Crusades. Yes. Um, but pre that and in and around that era, era um, it, I mean, our, right, okay, let's, let's go off on one, shall we? Our patron saint in this to, country, our patron saint well, you know is Saint George, <laughs> yeah? And Saint George used to carry a shield which was white with a red line down it and a red line across it. And so, you know, that was then taken into the Crusades and it represented England. Where was Saint George from? Turkey. Turkey. It was Turkish. <laughs> it was Turkish. Now, it was actually a Turkish <laughs> Christian, but that's only because it was before 
our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought the message of Islam. Yes. So in effect, had it been a few hundred years later, he would it'd have been, been Muslim. Muslim. Of course he would. It'd have been Muslim. And I think this is great. I think this is absolutely phenomenal. But it just goes to show how people misinterpret information. So to take St. George, who was a Turkish person, and use his representation in a, in a racist way... It's against, just, against immigration against into immigration the UK. Is extraordinary. It's paradox. So to take the Palestinian flag and suggest that flying that is promoting terrorism is abhorrent. Yes, I it find is. it hugely offensive. So do I. Uh, but of course, if people are using it to promote um, uh, terrorism, then that is illegal. That, that is wrong, and I'm sure you would decry it, I would decry it, and I'm sure yep. everybody watching this evening would decry yes. that as well. Yes. To declare freedom for an entire populace, that's not illegal. No. That's, that's no. just being human. Yep. That's part of humanity. It's extraordinary. Okay, without any, uh, any fear of uh, doubt or contradiction, I uh, put my Palestinian flag outside of my window, which is the, uh, the third floor up, and it's visible from a major trunk road mm -hmm. within Leeds. Yep. Alhamdulillah. So uh, a, a few thousand people see that flag every single day. And I'm quite proud to fly it. Yes. I'm quite proud it's there. Now, if anybody comes up and tells me that I'm breaking any law, then first of all, I'll question them. I'll question the, 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 the where, yep. where they've got their information from because that's not my understanding. And I'll also stand my ground because I want to, to be visibly and vocally in support of the plight of the Palestinian people yes. at this time. Yep. That's my right as a human being. It's my right under the laws of free speech, freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm doing that whilst not promoting terrorism in any way, shape or form. Yep. And if we take an example, we've been on several marches, have we not? You know, yes. Any available march, we're there. Yes. Because you know, with the exception of getting on a plane and going to Palestine, think, well, what can I do? You know, I can donate. We're going to talk about this a little bit later on, but I can donate to certain places. Um, you know, I can educate myself. I can pray and I can march. I can go out and show that there is support for peace. There's support for a ceasefire. Fire. There's support for freedom of occupation. And we do that by marching. And we both wore, uh, you know, in and amongst other things, uh, the, the flag of... Palestine. Yes. Um, and my youngest wore the flag of Palestine and people had the flag of Palestine draped over them. And, you know, the weird thing is, I'm incredibly proud to be British. You know, it, it's my heritage. It's where my parents were born, my grandparents. We can date our family all the way back to uh, uh, the Doomsday Book. And, and I'll be, oh, yeah, great, British. But I'd have felt really weird walking down a road with a Union Jack or a flag of St. George on my mm. shoulders. Yeah. But to do that with a flag of Palestine... Yeah. Felt amazing. Yeah, it felt I, have, incredible. I have no problems with that at all. Incredible. So, so do not fear utilizing the flag of Palestine. Do not fear standing in support of a people who are in, uh, under occupation being persecuted, uh, being murdered. Really. Yeah, no, that's the that's the sad sad reality. Yeah. So I uh, put a post in support of the Palestinian people uh, on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I wrote was from the river to the sea dot 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 and then I put a picture of the Palestinian flag um, underneath those words showing solidarity for the Palestinian people the, 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 the Palestinian people and their right to to live um, uh, in peace hmm. and their right uh, to to exist and who could possibly have any objection to such a statement. You see, the thing is that what people don't realise is that there are currently about two million uh, Arab Muslim people mm -hmm. living in Israel and everybody gets on fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a problem, no problem. Now, uh, I would uh, doubt very much that uh, given that the, uh, the uh, state of Israel has said, openly said, uh, that this is 
uh, they, they shouldn't have the right to exist. The Palestinian people should not have the right to exist. Yes. This has been stated. Mm -hmm. It's been stated at very high level within the Israeli government. I don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I vehemently disagree with them. Yep. Uh, and I'll be vocally against that. And uh, my stance against that knows no bounds. Mm -hmm. Okay? But it is stated. It is a stated intent to, to rid uh, that area of Palestinian people. Yes. Yeah. And the state of Palestine. And the state of Palestine, mm -hmm. uh, to be gone. And so now, that, that in itself is, is, uh, uh, is criminal. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's in breach of so many uh, international uh, laws. It's so many, uh, in breach of uh, human rights. It's in breach of... Yeah. It is a war crime. <coughs> and we're witnessing war crimes happening uh, every hour of every day. Yes. Uh, as this war continues. It's, yep. it's crazy. But do you know what? From the river to the sea, what I'm saying is that Palestinian people should be free yes. and should be able to exist. Yeah, and let's examine that because there's been a huge amount of controversy. The uh, Home Secretary has tried to create a situation where stating from the river to the sea, Palestinians will be free, is considered anti-Semitic. Yes. That's what they are trying to establish. But let's think what those words say. From the river to the sea, well, from the River Jordan. Yeah, to the sea. To yep. the sea, Mediter Mediterranean. Yeah. I'm going to go with, we'll go with Mediterranean. Um, from the River Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea, we're saying that the people within that, within that area, should live free. We're not saying should obliterate any particular state, should remove a state, end a state, should kill certain people. What we're saying when we make that statement from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. We're saying that the people who live there will live in freedom. Do they live in freedom at the moment? No. No, they live in the largest what? Uh, open air prison. It's been called and described the largest open air prison, which I don't think does it justice. Nope. Open air concentration camp, maybe. Yes. But they are living yes. currently in the largest, most heavily popular, po populated open air prison. People in prison aren't generally considered free. So when we're saying from the river to the sea, let those people be free, we literally mean live in freedom. But again, if we could draw parity, because we were discussing this earlier, when the, uh, uh, the message Black Lives Matter was first introduced, there was an awful lot of white people took offence. Because what they heard was, well, if black lives matter, white lives don't. That's not what it's saying. <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not what was being said. Nothing like it was saying throughout history, white lives have mattered. Yeah. That's a tick. <laughs> that's a given. <laughs> what we're saying is black lives matter as well. But cool. black lives matter as well isn't really a very welcoming phrase, is it? No. Do you know what I mean? No. Because it's, just it's by saying as catchy, well, it suggests it? that you don't think they do matter. It's not catchy enough. Oh my goodness. So, to say that Black Lives Matter <laughs> does not say that white lives don't. And I think people have come to recognise this. So to say we want Palestine and the Palestinian people to be free isn't saying that we want anything negative to happen to anybody else. No. Nope. But let's be fair, it is asking for occupation to end yes for persecution yeah. to end so how can anybody make that statement anti-semitic and therefore <laughs> illegal okay Janaid, are you anti uh the the people who follow the jewish religion uh, no not not at all not nor at all am I, nor am i not as, in as, any we, as we always say form. Following one of the three religions is a phenomenal start. Yeah. I have an opinion on which one I think is best. Yes. I happen to have a personal opinion. Do you know I'm what? Sure it's I agree with you. <laughs> I'm sure it's shared <laughs> by many people watching. Yes. But the fact is, those of the book are awesome. So that is both Jews and Christians, as well so as Muslims, but Jews, Jews and Christians are awesome. They believe in? One God. One God. That's Alhamdulillah, it. that's phenomenal. So the Jewish tradition, the Christian tradition, and the Islamic tradition yep. are all known as the Abrahamic, Abrahamic religions. religions. Why? Because they are all founded on the teachings of Abraham. Abraham. Alhamdulillah. So we all follow pretty much the same line of thinking. Yes. 
Yep. Some have gone a little bit astray yes. in parts. Yep. Uh, some have gone uh, a little bit too down one road and not not uh, taking a, mm -hmm. a holistic view. Yep. And what Islam's done, in my opinion, is come and repaired yep. the inconsistencies that were caused by mankind. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what uh, Islam did. So Allah Islam, is perfection. Uh, yeah. Allah subhanahu wa taala is perfection. Human beings. They're bit, not. Bit rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> bit rubbish, bit. we just are. So we're giving a message. You know, they call it telephone now, don't they? Yes. But we, you, where you whisper to one person, they whisper to the next person, they whisper to the next person. By the end of the, 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 the row of people, totally different message. Different message altogether. You know, when we, as human beings, pass a message on, it tends to get distorted, things change over time, it's maybe not understood because it's a few hundred years later, or it's not understood because it's a few hundred years prior to when that message is meant yep. to be important. Yeah. Uh, or so some people get hold of that message and decide that part of it they like, <laughs> other parts of it they're not, yes. so, not too, too sure about. Yes. So they leave out those bits and yes. just concentrate on the bits that they absolutely like. Yep. But that is not conveying the message. Yeah. That's conveying a version of the message which is which suits you, know, you. which uh, suitable yes. uh, at that time. So you know when, when we say coming back to back to this this um, uh, Palestine and an uh, Israel um, uh, conflict. When we say from the river to the sea, yep. dot, 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 we're saying everybody should be free yes. to live their lives and they should live in peace side by side. Yep. They should live, yeah, not and in fear. Not, not one controlling or oppressing yes. the other. Yep. They should live with equal rights, yep. equal uh, human rights as well as social freedom uh, of and movement. political rights. So they freedom they of should movement. have all the freedoms that we enjoy. Freedom of religion whatever religion they choose. Yes. Freedom to work. We discussed last week that that area has a 50% uh, unemployment rate. Half the people in that area cannot or do not work. That's extraordinary. Yes. You know, how can you expect a people to, to look after themselves and to provide for themselves in a situation like that? So freedom to work, freedom to have jobs, freedom to travel, freedom of, uh, freedom of will. You know, I mean, well, okay, we're going to talk about um, the, the, the area, we're going to start by talking about Al-Aqsa. You've been. I have. Was it an easy place to get into? No. Why not? Because it's uh, every gate and entrance to the precinct of Al-Aqsa is, uh, is guarded by Israeli guards. So it's in effect policed. Uh, it's, it's policed it's not just everywhere. The well, yeah. militarised. Mm, That's what true. it is. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a truncheon they pointed at, it wasn't. These are soldiers with guns mm. uh, and the rest. Yeah, tear gas canisters, grenades, uh, guns all on them. Yeah, mm. and yes, I was faced when I was going on to uh, uh, through one of the gates. I was faced with a, a Israeli guard who pointed a gun at me and told me to give him his pas uh, give him my passport. Mm. So I did. Pointed yeah. a gun at you. He was pointing a gun at me, so I reached very carefully into my pocket and pulled mm -hmm. my passport out really slowly. And I handed it to, to this guy and he opened it up and said, what's your name? I said, well, my name's in my passport, if you can read. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but if, in the event that you can't read, I'll make mm -hmm. it easy for you. My name is Muhammad Yusuf Bashforth. Mm -hmm. Are you Muslim? He said. Mm -hmm. I said, well, with a name like Muhammad, you can guess, can't you? Mm. Yeah, and uh, I, yes, I am Muslim. He said, recite from the Quran. You know, I was thinking, this is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. All I want to do is go and visit a place where I am, I am rightfully enabled to go and visit, mm -hmm. that being the third most holy site in Islam. Yes. I just want to get through this gate onto that precinct. <coughs> yep. So I was thinking, what's all this? Why, why, is, he, why is he doing this? Mm. So he said, recite from the Quran. So I very, very, very carefully put my hand up and literally pushed his gun to one side and said, Qul ya al kafirun, which uh, we, we, most of us will know means, say, you, oh, you unbeliever. Hmm. Now, he didn't like that. Mm. And he understood that because oh, yes. they are actually trained in the Arabic language. Yep. And they're trained, part of their tra training is to read the Quranic text yeah. so that they recognize it when, mm. when it's being spoken out in the public. SubhanAllah. And that, that was just trying to get into Al-Aqsa. Mm. 
let's not talk just yet about the numbers of times that Al Aqsa is invaded yeah. by uh, the Palis uh, the uh, sorry Israeli, Israeli military, yeah. um, even during the likes of Tarawih yeah. uh, prayers, prayers during Ramadan. Anyway, we'll we'll, we'll come back to this. We're just going to take a, a quick break for a couple of minutes. Uh, enjoy, and we'll see you soon. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.